Some screens have been updated, game behavior is improved, and the tutorial is seeing a revamp. My name is Garrett, and welcome to episode 62 of Attila's Prep. As I get closer to release, I want to make sure that all the menus and UI look presentable, not like I just threw them together. The main menu, the difficulty screen, and the main game scene UI has now been improved to look a little bit better. I added some more color, fixed some inconsistency with colors, and changed up a few sprite elements. Most of you guys watching know I'm not professional and I, I'm just a solo dev and still a student, um, but I want to come off as more professional. Yeah, professional joke. Not professional in the way that I want to come off as boring, but that it feels polished, that it feels like it's a legit game and not someone who just threw it together. I'm not saying in a way where I come off as boring, but I want the game to feel refined so that whenever players start my game that they don't instantly quit off of it. I doubt I'm going to make any more major UI changes, but right now the UI I feel is good and that's, that's all I really want, I just want good. The idea that you must protect the player from themselves is really important and I wanted to make sure that with my game as well. Even if I think certain things are obvious, they might not be obvious to every player. Sometimes since I've been developing this game for like, well, like 70 months now, I kind of get desensitized to certain things and thankfully I've gotten some feedback from the demo that enlightened me to things that I wouldn't have otherwise noticed. I want to make sure that players don't make certain mistakes or misjudgments that might annoy or frustrate them. One suggestion came from Jonas or the Broman 90 and that I add a confirmation prompt whenever the player tries to quit the game because it would be really annoying if they try to quit the game, the game does not save and they lose all their progress. I also made it so that whenever the game is paused, the music is paused as well just to signal what is happening. Thank you to Rob for that suggestion. In addition to that, I've been trying to break the game while playing, making sure that you can do the proper things that you're supposed to do and you can't do the things that you shouldn't. I mean, I'll be perfectly honest with myself, there's no way I'm going to find all of them, but I want to get as close as I can. As long as I get the major points fixed, then that is good with me. And I'm not trying to say that to sound like I don't care about the game. I, I do, but... I gotta pick and choose my battles. I can't spend all day fixing bugs or else there's gonna be not enough content. Oh, also I wanna add here, uh, thank you for the advice on the saving system. I haven't started that yet, but I have gotten some good feedback. I'm starting to learn about JSON files and I will probably use that. Besides game development, one of my biggest passions is martial arts. Still training at home, I've just been doing a lot of push-ups and sit-ups, pretty basic stuff, but the basics are always good to go back to and make sure that I have them down. All in all, I think it's just important, especially in a time like this, to stay fit and healthy. Um, I really love staying fit normally, so I really need to do something now. Uh, it's not the best case scenario, but it still works for me. I've said before that the game is not really as complicated as most other tycoon games, but it still is more complicated than the average game. And that's really just the nature of the genre. Tycoon games and management games are a little bit more difficult. I sort of had a tutorial video from the demo, but from some feedback, it feels more appropriate to add a little bit more. I've written a new tutorial script and I'm hoping to structure it rather in animations and sound as opposed to just a pure video. Related to the game behavior, I want to make sure that the player has the appropriate options, giving them the ability to skip the tutorial, also to replay it, and just alternate between the menus as they please. Part of me feels like spending all this time on the tutorial and teaching the player how the game works and giving them extra descriptions and tips. It feels a little like a waste of time to me sometimes, but from a player's perspective, it's really not. Though this example is way more detailed, I couldn't imagine playing games like Civilization without some sort of tutorial. I think there's value from letting the player fail and learn from their mistakes and try again, but sometimes they might not even realize what their mistakes are. This guy, Robson Rages, actually made a video featuring my game, DK the Cake, that I did in the Ultimate Game Jam. And one thing I realized was, well, one, that he's funny, but also that he didn't use the jumping mechanic at all, and that helps you a lot when playing the game, and he didn't seem to realize that it was part of the game. And that's my mistake, not his, for trying to teach him how to play the game. And I realized that it's really important to let the player know what they can do. I'd rather the player complain about the game knowing everything they can do, rather than complaining whenever they don't know what is all possible. 
This is kind of a double header question. One is, have you ever played a game that didn't have a tutorial and you really wanted it? And also on the flip side, have you played a game with a great tutorial that you really love? If you enjoyed and are itching to play the game, you can actually play the Space Prevention Force demo linked in the description below. Thank you for watching. I want you to know that I love you, I care for you, and I'm there for you. If you need anything at all, just reach out to me through Discord. My messages are always open for anything at all. Until next time, from me and the commanders, we are saying goodbye, and we'll see you in the next devlog for some more fun. Bye, everyone.